Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the Timeline Visual. Now, the Timeline Visual is a filter. It's a type of filter very similar to a slicer that you have inside of Power BI, but this one is solely focused around filtering down dates. So it gives you a bit of a slider, as you can see on the screen on the right-hand slide, and that slider allows you to easily select or multi-select dates, months, quarters, years, uh, all around a time. Okay, now that does mean that you must provide a date value. Any value that you want to filter must have the data type of a date. If you provide in something like a year or a month name, those things will not be able to filter using a timeline. You might be best suited to use a typical slicer if you want to filter by one of those type of items. Now you do have quite a few customizations available to you in the timeline. We're going to look at some of those, including things like changing how visibly how the slicer looks, but you'll also be able to change things like when the beginning of your fiscal calendar begins. So if you're Microsoft, for example, who has a fiscal calendar that begins in July, then you would change this timeline so that it begins on July 1st or whatever the day is that your fiscal calendar appears or begins. And then you're able to visualize that through the timeline. You're also able to do things like what is the first day of the week for your company? So does your organization actually recognize Monday as the first day of the week? You can actually determine those things inside of the timeline slicer. All right, so our next step then is to go ahead and take a look of where to go download the timeline how to then import it and use it in an example. All right, so our first step is to come to the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery, and we're gonna slide down here inside this gallery, and you're looking for the timeline. You'll find the timeline appear here right now, at least currently on the left-hand side of my screen, and you'll go ahead and select the timeline and then choose to download the visual. It gives you a pretty decent description of the tool. You can see here it's developed by Microsoft, so you know that it's uh, been developed internally there. And then you can also download some samples if you'd like to play around with some samples they've already pre-created. You can certainly download those here. Now the key thing for our example that we're doing together today is you're going to download the visual, store this somewhere that you can easily find it because we're going to be importing that next into the Power BI desktop. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I've already downloaded it. In case you haven't, go ahead and do that for our next example. Now in our example, what we're going to need to do is go to the Power BI desktop application. So launch the Power BI desktop application like I have here already, and you're gonna start by going to get some data that we're going to use for this example. Now in this example, we're going to be testing a little bit of a theory. I'm sure many of you have been to, are driven by, or seen commercials for one of those cash for gold places, meaning bring in my gold from old jewelry that I have and they'll exchange it for cash in some way. And they've always talked about how gold is at its all time highest peak and that we need to cash it in now or we're gonna lose out. And so I'm always curious, is that true? Is it really the all-time peak for gold? And so what we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna go pull in some data that I found on the web. This is actual real data that shows us the last three full years, so it's, we're gonna end in 2015, but the last three full years of data for gold and the gold prices. And we're gonna look at the average gold prices and see, is it really going up year over year? And uh, as you might already guess, you're gonna be uh, not so surprised that it's not. So let's go ahead and look at that data. So we're gonna go over here to my Power BI desktop and we're gonna go up to the Get Data section and we're gonna select that we wanna pull in data from Excel. Okay, so we're gonna select Excel and then we're gonna to go to my data section here of the class files and we're gonna choose gold prices. Now this file is also available to you, available to download. If you look at the links below, you'll be able to find where you can download this file if you don't already have it available to you. All right, so I'll select gold prices and hit open. And this is going to show us the last several years, if you select the daily prices, this is going to show us day by day what the price of gold was, all the way from 2013 to 2014 and 2015. We'll have it at a day by day breakdown, and you'll notice there are some days missing where you just don't get prices for gold because it's the weekend, for, what it, for, for example. All right, so I'm going to select the daily prices and hit load to go ahead and bring this into my Power BI de desktop data model. So I'll hit load. That's now going to bring it into my data model. And I can see those values showing up here on the right hand side. I can see the date, the gold price, and the year. Now you'll notice the year is already summarizing. For some reason it saw that the year is a number and it assumed that I want to summarize it. Not a huge deal for this example because we don't really intend on using the year column. But if you don't want to summarize year because it doesn't really make sense to summarize 2015 and 2014 together, you could change this by selecting year and going up to the modeling section. And then underneath modeling you'll see default summarization. Right now it's set to sum you could tell it that you do not want to summarize that and that'll turn off the capability to default summarize that value. We're not really intending on using year anyways, but it's good to know that you can do those things. All right, now what I'd like to do first before we bring in the timeline is to actually create a regular line chart here 
and visualize what the average gold price looks like over time. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and start by bringing in a line chart from the visualization pane here, and then we'll bring that line chart down to the bottom, and I'm gonna make it rather large actually, because we have quite a bit of data here, and I'm gonna drop into that line chart the date as well as the gold price. Now by default, the way that Power BI works with dates, it's automatically gonna place a date into a date hierarchy. And you'll notice even though I'm using the date field, it's automatically rolled it up to the year level. Not really what I intended to do, and it's done that because you'll see here in the axes property or the axes section here of the field well, it's set to bring in and bring back year, quarter, month, and date, and it's rolled it up to the year level. Well, if you don't really want it to be placed into a hierarchy, you can change that by going next to it where it has this little down arrow and change it from using it as a hierarchy to just bringing back the date by itself. And then that way we're at a much more granular look at the data and we can see day by day each data point and what the, the value of gold was. Now right now it's summarizing gold, so if we wanna see an average price, uh, we can change that here where you see the value section, you can hit the down arrow and change that from showing gold price to showing the average of gold price. Really it's not gonna impact everything, anything here because we're looking at a day by day value of what the value is. So it's only summarizing one value into itself. So it didn't really impact our visual here. All right, so that gets us a good look at the data. And as you can see here, gold prices are indeed going down slowly, not going up. So we have an understanding of those uh, advertisements being pretty false. But what I can do is I can actually look here and see how do I wanna filter this data down? You know, if I, I'm sure if we went back many years, by the way, that gold actually has gone up. 2013 was a banner year for gold, but it's been going down since. But what I'd like to do is be able to filter this down and just look at certain months or certain days or certain weeks in a year and see how those certain days, months, or weeks, or even entire years have been doing in gold prices. So what we're going to do is we're going to now bring in a timeline. So to do that, we're going to go add in a custom visual. You do that by selecting the ellipses inside the visualization pane here, and you're going to select to import a custom visual. I'll go ahead and select import, and we're gonna look for the custom visual that we've downloaded already. We showed you that earlier on the visual gallery, and we're gonna be looking for the timeline value or the timeline visual. So we'll select the timeline and hit open, and it's now imported that successfully, and we can place that now into our design surface. And I'm actually gonna make it pretty large as well. I'm gonna make it take up the width of the screen here. Now, with that laid out on our design surface, we can start to place different data elements on top of it. And really, if you remember, the only data element that it'll accept is a date. And not only is that a date, it has to be a date data type. So you can't have a string value that looks like a date. It has to be a real date. And so what I can do is I can drop in the date that I have from my table here, from the daily prices, and I can place it into the time section of the timeline. And you can see here, it's placed that into my timeline. Now, the way the timeline works as far as usability standpoint is you're gonna select certain values you wanna filter. So if I only wanna look at, let's say for example, April of 2014, I can select April here, and now it's only filtering the data below in the below chart to show the April dates. And you can see that below, and you can hover above it and see the tooltip that indeed this is 2014 April. You can also look at multiple months. Say for example, I wanted to look at three months at once. You can select the semicircle either on either side of April. Maybe I wanted to include May, you can drag that over. And if I want to include March, you can drag that over. And that'll now include extra months here for me. By the way, on the, the line chart, you'll notice that it's automatically rolling up these and showing April and May. If you wanted to see each individual day, there's a property you can set inside the line chart too. If you select the line chart and you want to see each individual day, you would go to the format section here. And on the x-axis, you could change this from continuous to categorical, and it would actually show every single day in here if you wanted it to. Just knowing that you can do that is kind of nice. Maybe it doesn't make sense for this example, but you should know you can do that. All right, I'm gonna change it back to continuous, and then let's talk back more about the timeline. Now the timeline has the ability, not only like we showed a moment ago, to be able to filter based on the selection that you have up on the top, you can also change the granularity of the data that you're filtering. Right now we're looking at months but you could also change by going up to the top left that you wanna filter by week, by day, by quarter, or by year. Okay, so you have the ability to kind of scroll this back and forth to choose what granularity you would like to filter on, year, quarter, month, week, or day. Now, in our case, for our example, I'm gonna leave it on month, but just know, again, you can shift this around, you can play around with this so that you can easily see uh, filtering at different levels. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna flip back over to month and let's go over to our format section, our format paintbrush to see what type of fields or what type of properties will allow us to customize the timeline. So I'm gonna select the timeline, highlight it, and I will select just a few months here again. Okay, 
And then we're going to go ahead and go over to our property section here, our format paintbrush. And we're going to see where you have many different properties you can choose from, including the first one here called fiscal year start. And this is essentially what's going to allow you to tell you tell Power BI when the beginning of your fiscal year is. So if your fiscal calendar starts in July and you're doing a fiscal date report, then you can come underneath fiscal year start and you can tell it that you want to change the beginning of your year from January to something like July. So Microsoft, for example, starts their year in July. I can flip that to July. You'll notice that it actually updated our report and our timeline to show July underneath the beginning of the year. So 2015 appears here, quarter one, July shows up right underneath that. You can also change the day at which you're beginning. So right now this is starting on day one. You can update that here to show something like day 15 or whenever the day of the week or day of the month that you want to begin the timeline or the month, I should say. So this is telling it when the beginning of your year is. And that's a very nice feature. Again, you can play around with that. I'm going to leave that here as July, just saying that that is the beginning of my fiscal calendar. All right, the next property you have here is first day of week. And this one's a nice one as well if you have a different beginning day of the week for your organization. If your organization does not begin their week on Sundays, maybe they begin on Mondays, you can come underneath the, the first day of week property and change that day by switching this from Sunday to Monday or whatever you would prefer it to be. To be able to show you what this does, I'm going to flip this over to the week property here or even the day property. And if I go back over to this first day of week and change this from Sunday to Monday, you'll notice that it shifts all the weeks when they begin. And so you can kind of see that you can easily adjust the, the first day of a week by going and using this property. All right, I'm going to flip this back. I'm going to revert that back to Sunday. Just wanted to show you how that one works. All right, our next property that we're going to play around with here is called range header. And the range header is a nice one as well. The range header is basically a property up at the top here. I'm just kind of circling it with my mouse right now. This is what's going to show you what is filtered on this report. Really nice to have some kind of a range filter here so you know whenever your, your timeline isn't completely visible that you can look up at the top and know exactly what is being filtered by looking at the range header. So this range header here, you have the ability to customize a little bit. By going over to the range header property, you can turn it off or turn it on. So you'll notice it's kind of going away and coming back. Or if you expand that, you can actually come in and adjust the size of it or adjust the font color. So right now here, you, you can see it's only at nine point font. If I want to increase it, I can bump that up to something like 19 or 20 and make it a lot easier to see here. You can also come over here underneath the font color. If you want to change the font color, say, for example, I want to make it yellow. You can adjust that there and make it a different color if you'd like. That's the range header property. The next one here is cells. And this one's a nice one as well, just for visualization sake to maybe change some of the colors of the cells that you have here. So what I'm telling you is the cells identify the boxes that you see on the screen here. Any of the boxes that you see available, those you can actually uh, change the color of. So you see the selected cell colors are currently this light blue color. The unselected cell colors are currently transparent or white here. And you can see that by selecting the property here. You can adjust what those colors are. So say, for example, I wanted to make the selected cell color something like that yellow we used a few moments ago. I can select that yellow here, and you can see it changed the value. And then for the unselected cells, maybe I want to make that kind of that light blue we were looking at a minute ago. So that gives you a kind of nice color combination. You may want to adjust this to something like your company colors. You have the ability to do that here inside of the cells property. All right, let's keep going down. Let's look at what else you have. Underneath granularity, from granularity, this is where actually affecting this section of the, the timeline visual right here in the top left where you can change how the granularity slider appears. So I kind of call this a granularity slider here. So a couple things you can do here, you can change the color of this. So if you want the slider to be, or the, uh, the uh, scale to be a different color, maybe you want it to be that blue color, you can certainly change that here. That color is kind of hard to see. Let's make it kind of a darker color, how about that? You can also change the slider color as well. That's what that little box is. That box that you see is around the M right now. You can change the color of that if you want as well. So it's a little easier to see as well. Now, the granularity property, this one right here, this one I don't really think is that necessary. Really, all this granularity property does is it shifts from one granularity to another, which you can already do just by using the slider itself. If you grab the slider and move it somewhere else, it allows you to shift from one granularity to another. So I'm not really sure why that is at here. Uh, it kind of go out of their way to show it to you again, but um, it's not so totally necessary for this. All right, the last one that we have here is labels. Now, labels allows you to turn on and off the labels. So you can see the data labels that appear on the timeline. You can turn them on. You can turn them off. That's off right here. If I turn them back on, you can also adjust what color or what size they are. So if I wanted to change the color, for example, maybe I wanted them to be a little bit more bold or black, I can change them for that off gray to a more bold black there so it's a little easier to read. 
and you can also increase the font size of it as well if you wanted to. You can bump it up a few notches. I bumped it up to 13 there, so it's a little larger to see, but you do know as you get it larger and larger that it's a little bit more difficult to see at lower granularity. So here I'm at, a, at the week level, it's just showing a bunch of W's whenever there's more than one digit to the, to the week. Days, even, uh, that one's not too difficult to see. Really, it's the weeks, and as the larger the font size you go, the more difficult it is to read. All right, so you can play certainly play around with that some. I'm going to revert that back to the default. Maybe I'll make it black at least. That was much easier to read. The last set of properties that we have in here have to do with really everything that you would see in every other visual. The standard visual properties like the title. So you can adjust the title if you wanted to. Maybe I want to make it so that it says something like uh, date filter here. Instead of just date, I can change that here and I can give it a new name. I can center it. I can maybe make the font color a little different. Maybe I make it a little larger to see here. You can play around with this as well, make it a more pure black. There's a lot of more uh, flexibility that you have with the title. And again, this property you would see in any other visual that you have inside of Power BI. You can also change things like the background. If you want to add a background color to the visual, you can certainly do that by turning on the background and selecting a different color here if you wanted to, and you can give it a little bit of an accent. I'm not going to bother doing that. just want to show you that you can do that. Lock aspect, that makes sure that the size of the visual never changes whenever you resize it. So if I resize it, I can make sure that the aspect ratio stays the same. Not really something you have to worry about as much with the timeline. Underneath general, this just defines the location of it. So where is it actually situated on my report? And then finally, the last one is border. You can turn on or off a border, and you can customize the way that the border actually looks as far as the color. So that's really it. The last few properties here are pretty standard for every one of the visuals, but there are quite a few of them here that you may want to play around with whenever you're using the timeline, and you might find them that rather useful. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tour of the timeline custom visual. Look forward to showing you our next one.